Take it a step further. Catholic schools. Do you know that Catholicism teaches theistic evolution? What's theistic evolution? That God, the creator, created the earth, the heaven, and the earth, and the sea, and all that in them is using evolution. That's theistic evolution, and that is blasphemy. Catholic schools, some Christian schools, they don't teach Genesis chapter 1 through 11 and equip these young children who are asking intelligent questions. They don't equip them with the why behind the what so that they can give an answer to that teacher of that hope that lies within them. When that teacher tries to beat the faith out of them, and put evolution into them. See, this is satanic. See, if Satan can get us, get our kids to question Genesis 1 through 11, then same-sex marriage is plausible. If the creation was not six literal days, then you open yourself up to a variety of fantastic and aberrant claims. No wonder when you teach a child that he evolved from the goo to the zoo to you, no wonder he acts like an animal. No wonder he shoots his classmates and his teachers and the faculty and his parents and then shoots himself because after all, we're just animals who have evolved. The importance of Genesis 1 through 11 cannot in any way ever be understated. Let me ask you a question. You're here this morning. You're thinking, wow, Pastor, you, did you not get enough sleep last week? Or <laughs> That's not it. This has been heavy on my heart for quite some time. As a father of young children, my greatest fear is that if the Lord tarries, my children will walk away from the faith. I have many a nights on my knees just beg God for my kids. John said there's no greater joy that a father has or a parent has than when his children are walking with the Lord. Conversely, there is nothing more painful, and I think some of you as parents and maybe even grandparents know how painful it is when you have a prodigal child who wants nothing to do with the Lord. And Satan's right there, isn't he, condemning you? It's your fault. Had you been a more godly mother, a more godly father? Had you prayed more with your kids? Had you had family devotions? Has you, had you lived your Christian life in a way that was not hypocritical? They would still be walking with the Lord. I mean, what comes packaged with it is just unthinkable. The Lord impressed upon my heart a long time ago that I need to take the needed time with my children. And I need to teach them and I need to train them so that they can stand up for what they believe by saying why they believe what they believe. So that they can say to that evolution believer, <laughs> you know, the earth cannot be as old as you think it is because all of those asteroids and those comets that are in the universe, they deteriorate and a lot of matter as they you know are flying through the universe is lost and if the earth was as old as you think there would not be any anything left how about when we first landed man on the moon and remember the pictures this is going to date me i was very young at the time uh, <laughs> but remember that apollo uh, uh when it landed on on the moon and it had they had to crawl down this huge ladder do you know why they did that because based on evolution they speculated and estimated that you would have over millions of years all of this moon dust 
so that when the, uh, the, the, the ship landed and they would get out, they wouldn't just be in the dust. They would be basically above it, and based on their calculations, it would land, and they would be right above that uh, moon dust. And you remember the pictures. They land, and there's like two inches of dust. Why? Because the earth is perhaps six to 10,000 years old and has to be. Well, I need to know this. And my kids need to know this. And your kids need to know this too. And your kids need to know that in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. He created them man and woman. And they need to know the why behind the what. It was interesting this last week, the Lord had presented an opportunity for me to talk to a man who was raised Seventh-day seven day Adventist like I, had completely left the faith, had many doubts, and knowing I was a pastor, asked me, do you really believe the Bible is true? And do you, I mean, he was virtually reading my notes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe the earth is only 6,000 years old. It has to be millions of years old. And he's going on, he's just reciting the, the exact questions virtually verbatim that people are asking and the ones that we don't have answers for. And oh my goodness, I'm, oh, Lord, this is great. This is my sermon on Sunday. This is the prophecy update. How cool is this? So I started sharing with him and it was amazing. His whole countenance changed. He had never heard this before. You've got to be kidding me. And he's older than I am. And I'm old. <laughs> and I'm getting older. And he's older than me. And all of his life. No wonder he's not in the church. No wonder he doesn't have a faith in the Lord. No wonder he doesn't believe in the Bible. All of these years have gone by. And all of those unanswered questions have remained unanswered. So the doubt has come in. And now he questions everything. I shared with him. I said, man, I'd love to take you to lunch sometime and, and, share, and share these things with you. Well, he's a busy man, and I'm praying the Lord will present that opportunity. I'd love to, you know, I even invited him to, you know, come to church. And I was telling him, you know, there's, there's really no way that the earth can be millions of years old, and here's why. And here's why we can believe the Bible is accurate. And there is more proof that the Bible is accurate, then there is proof that Caesar even ever lived. And that is based on the archaeological finds on the manuscripts, the original manuscripts of the scriptures. There is more proof that these Bibles that we hold in our hands is the infallible word of God than there is that even that pew that you're sitting on is holding you up. Maybe you're here this morning and you're thinking, you know, I've had those doubts. I really never was taught why I believe what I believe. I've never really had that's been sort of that missing link, no pun intended, in my Christian faith is that I don't know the why behind the what. I want to encourage you this morning. It's never too late. It's never too late. Maybe a good starting point would, go, would be to go to AnswersInGenesis.org. They have just a myriad of resources that are just invaluable. Maybe you're here this morning and you have a child that's already gone. I want to encourage you to get the book Already Gone from that website. There's also some accompanying CDs and DVDs and if you want more information, you're more than welcome to email me. I'd be more than happy to share it with you and, and encourage you because I think that we're headed for some very interesting times, especially with the elections coming up. If evil prevails, and it could, 
What's that going to do if we're not able to stand now? Jeremiah the prophet said, if you can't handle it when the footmen come, what are you going to do when the horsemen come? In other words, if you can't stand now, what are you going to do if there is a, an increase in the persecution of the church of Jesus Christ prior to the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ? Are you going to be able to stand firm, stand strong? Are you going to be able to give an answer to every man of that hope that lies within you? And they're asking intelligent questions, and you need to give them intelligent answers, and you need to study to show yourself approved, a workman rightly dividing the word of truth so that you won't be embarrassed or ashamed when they ask you a question and you don't have the answer. Maybe for some it means spending more time in the Word of God on a daily basis. Studying. Asking God to minister these truths to you and to your children as well. We're losing our kids, man. I don't know how else to say it. We're losing our kids. The world that they're growing up in is so different than the world that we grew up in. I mean, they're living in a, a, a world of Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all of these MySpace and social networking sites, and they live in a virtual world, and they're dealing with stuff that you and I never even dealt with. The things that are coming at them. You know, the statistics are that 85% of people came to Christ before the age of 14. That scares the H-E double hockey sticks out of me, if I can say it that way. You mean by the, I came to Christ at age 19. I'm in the 15th percentile. 85% of people came to Christ before the age of 14. And you've seen the statistics here. By the time they get to high school, they're already gone. They've already left the faith. Oh, they might come to church with you. Man, I was, I was talking to a guy one time recently. He said as soon as he turned 18, his parents always made him go to church, so always like a good boy, he went to church. It was the most boring thing that he ever, and he was forced to go. So as soon as he turned 18, he quit going. I asked him why. He said, because I didn't have to anymore. Come on, honey, let's go to church because that's what we do. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Let's pray. <sighs> Father in heaven, forgive us. Forgive us for not doing or being that which you've called us to do and be. Lord, we need you to help us that we might become students of your word, that we might teach and train up our children in the fear and the admonition of you, Lord. Lord, we beg you for this grace, that you would grant us this grace and not pay us as this deserves. Lord, we beg you for our young generation. Please, Lord, don't let the enemy have them. Can you grab them out of the clutches of the God of this world and the deception of this age that those who are already gone would come back as the prodigal to your open arms as their heavenly father. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.